Hey friends, Chris Kildosher here with the Supernatural Life Podcast, Activate Ministries, True Love Ministries. God Almighty is a good God. He is a friend to sinners. He is one that is willing to lay down his life for the worst of us, for the things in our lives that we regret, the things in our lives that we feel ashamed about, the things in our lives that could never measure up. Friends, when you see the depth of Christ's forgiveness, God's forgiveness in Christ Jesus upon the cross, the Bible teaches that he who is forgiven much loves much. Uh, our love walk is dictated by how much we see his forgiveness in our lives and then thereby forgiving others. You know, God actually challenges us in Christ Jesus to forgive. We talked last time about forgiveness and redemption. Now that you're saved is what this message is all about. It is about the Christian walk. It is about following Jesus now that you've seen what he's done for you. When Jesus was on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. He was forgiving the people that ripped out his beard. He was forgiving the people that beat him to a pulp. He was forgiving his very friends that denied him. Peter denied him three times before the rooster crowed, to, even to a little girl cursing. I don't know that man. His, one of his best friends if not his best friend, the one that he spent a ton of time with in those three and a half years. Friends, Jesus forgives betrayers. Jesus forgives adulterers. Jesus forgives fornicators. Jesus forgives people of gross sexual sin. Jesus forgives thieves. He forgives murderers. He forgives uh, manipulators. He forgives people that are idolaters. He forgave you and he forgave me. And we must forgive. Forgiveness is integral to the gospel message. As far as east is from the west, your sins and lawless deeds are remembered no more when you come into Christ. So why keep record of other people's sins? Friends, if you've received Jesus and you're holding on to bitterness towards anyone, it could have been uh, the person that stole from you, the person that stole... um, things were uh, deeper than money from you. The person that stole uh, your future, someone that stole potentially your innocence, whatever it might have been, Jesus forgives both the abuser and he delivers the abused. Friend, you must forgive as God in Christ forgave you because he's given us what the Bible calls the ministry of reconciliation, not counting people's trespasses against them. If you have a record of wrongs in your heart towards anyone, that is bitterness in your heart. And forgiveness begins with seeing how much you're forgiven in Christ, that God gave himself for you on the cross, went into the grave, defeated death, defeated the devil, took on hell for you and me, and rose from the dead for the joy set before him, he endured that cross, allowed his blood to be shed for the remission of your sins and my sins. So any unforgiveness you have in your life, now is the time to get rid of it. You know, bitterness takes people to hell. The devil is a bitter, vengeful being, and he wants others to be under that same bitterness. Jesus drank a cup of sour wine, representing him drinking or tasting your and my bitterness. Friend, when you forgive, it's not saying what the person did was okay. It's not saying what the person did Um, is excused, it's giving the excuse or it's giving the, um, the punishment, the justice for the thing over into the hands of God. Because no matter what the bad was done to you, friend, more than likely that kind of bad was done to that other person too at some point in their life. People learn, uh, dysfunction from others. We're all born into it. And a sense because we're all born into sin in this world, but we learn pain from other people. And when you forgive, you get free. Friend, forgive right now. Don't even wait till the end of this. Speak out loud, say, I forgive so-and-so. I forgive that person. Someone's saying, "I, I can't forgive them, Chris. You don't know what I did. Friend, look at what they did to Jesus, the the perfect one. We would have all been there turning our back on him that day. None of us, none of us were righteous. None of us were holy without him. But he came for us, friend. Forgive. 
Do it right now. Do it even if it hurts, even if you don't know how to. Just say it out loud. And as you do, the pain, oh, hallelujah, the pain is going to leave your heart. You may have to say it more than once. You may have to forgive them for specific things right now. But as you forgive, you'll find freedom. Let me pray for you and then uh, we'll continue. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the power of your forgiveness. God, if our sins and lawless deeds are remembered no more, we no longer hold a record of wrongs. Father, we forgive in Jesus' name. Forgive the spouse. Forgive the parent. Forgive the sister. Forgive the brother. Forgive that friend. Forgive that cousin, that, that other family member. Forgive now. Forgive now. Forgive now. I'm going to continue reading from um, Ephesians 1, verse 7. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth. Friends, Jesus' blood washes away our sins. God, I thank you, Lord, for forgiveness washing over people right now. I thank you, Lord, for deliverance washing over people right now, for freedom washing over people, that the mystery of your will would be revealed. Your goodness is revealed in Christ, the good pleasure which you purposed in yourself. God, thank you that we get to be gathered together in one in Christ. Verse 11, Ephesians 1, in him also we've obtained an inheritance. Say, I have an inheritance. Somebody would say, uh, an inheritance? I don't even know my family. I don't even know my parents. Friends, when you're in Christ, God doesn't have any grandkids. You have a father. You have an elder brother. The Bible teaches that Jesus is our elder brother. He's the captain of our salvation. He is the firstborn from the dead. And he is the oldest family member. Praise God. Our father, the son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are family. They were family before you were created. They created you because they desired you. God had a dream. He wrapped skin around it. That dream was you. Whatever broken dreams you made of your life or happened in your life, whatever broken dream you feel like you've been living, Jesus Christ came in human flesh to redeem the dream. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You have an inheritance. You're predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. Ephesians 1.11 continues to say that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In him, you also, say me also, after I heard the word of truth, you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Holy Spirit is God with us in the earth. See, Jesus, fully God and fully man, had a body. When he rose from the dead, he still had a body that the disciples could touch and feel. There is still a man in heaven named Jesus sitting on the throne next to the Father. But he said, it's better that I go because I'm gonna send another. He told his disciples. He said, the Holy Spirit will be another comforter as, as Jesus was a comforter, as Jesus was a lover, as Jesus was kind, as Jesus was one who guided, who is the way, the truth, and the life. No one coming to the Father except by him. He sent the Holy Spirit who would not just be with us, but be in us. In Acts chapter two, it says the Holy Spirit would be poured out on all flesh, quoting Joel chapter two. See, the Holy Spirit is God with us and among us now. Jesus himself could only be in one place at one time outside of some, uh, some change in time. Uh, he had a body, but the Holy Spirit gets to be with you and in you. See, he said, it's better that I go to his disciples. Why? Because the Holy Spirit could be with each and every one of us individually. Think about this. The disciples could actually shake Jesus' hand. They could be hugged by Jesus. They could hug Jesus themselves. They could give him a high five. They could have a conversation with him. They could ask him questions. Jesus said, it's better that I go because I'm going to send another, the Holy Spirit. 
Holy Spirit is now God with us. And Holy Spirit makes Jesus real. Friend, you can right now, even in your car, I mean, be safe, you know, because you're driving or you're sitting, you can lift your hands and say, thank you, Father, that you sent your spirit to dwell with me and in me. Thank you, Father, that you sent Jesus to remove every barrier so that I can have full fellowship with you in the spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me and for raising from the dead. You are Lord and not me. I turn my back on sin to follow you. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for your blood. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. You confessing Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead is what the Bible ter- determines or what many people call a sinner's prayer, a prayer of salvation. You're doing that right now. You're thanking the Lord for his nearness. You're thanking him for his forgiveness. You're turning your back on sin to follow him. Friend, Jesus came to reveal the love of God, forgiveness, one, to reveal the Father, two. He said, I and the Father, one. He came in the flesh, Jesus Christ in the flesh, number three. And he also came to reveal the baptism in the Holy Spirit. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is what Jesus prophesied would come. In Luke 24, he speaks about the promise of the Father. In John 14, 15, and 16, he talked about the coming of the Holy Spirit. In Matthew, he commanded us to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He talked about the Spirit of truth. He talked about how the Holy Spirit, when we received him in Acts 1, 8, would give us power or ability. Ability to what? To be a witness. A witness of what? His resurrection. Amen. Baptism in the Holy Spirit is literally immersion in the love of God. Friends, Jesus came to bring us the Holy Spirit. He went through all of the things he went through to empower us and to fill us, to deliver us so that we could be close and be overwhelmed and overcome by the spirit of the Lord in whom there is freedom, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 says. And it says here in Ephesians 1, verse 13, in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the good news of your salvation, in whom also having believed, so after you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. That word promise, there's the same word that Jesus used in Luke 24. I'm going to read it to you. Luke 24, I believe it's starting in verse 49. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Say the promise. You know, if you had a perfect dad, a perfect earthly father who kept all of his promises, and he promised you the greatest gift that could be given, you would want that gift, wouldn't you, friend? See, Jesus suffered, died, and was buried on the third day rose from the dead, appeared to his disciples, and spoke about this promise. And he spoke about it before he ascended to the Father. And as they were gathered together in one place in one accord, it says in Acts chapter 2, suddenly there came a sound from heaven like a mighty rushing wind. It filled the whole house where they were sitting, and tongues of fire, say tongues of fire, came and rested upon each one's head. And they were all filled, say all filled, not just some, all, with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Say this with me, a tongue for everyone. Friends, the Holy Spirit comes and he actually fills us once we are cleansed by the blood of Jesus, once we receive that cleansing. As many as received him, he gave the right to become children of God. You're not forced into this thing. It has happened for each and every one of us, but it must be received. And when you hear the message of your salvation, you have the choice to receive the Savior, Jesus Christ. And in receiving him, you receive cleansing. You receive deliverance. And when you submit to him as your Lord, you also get to receive this wonderful baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then you are receiving what Romans 8 says is the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, Romans 8, 14, it says these are the children or sons of God. 
For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heir, Sam an heir. An heir of what? An heir of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together with him. The sufferings of this life with Christ is persecution. You have to be willing to suffer the reproaches of Christ. You have to be willing to actually say, I'm a follower of Jesus and suffer with what that means. That's something we'll share for another time. Paul said, the sufferings of this present time are not even worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. I'm going to go a little further in Romans 8. In verse 26, it says, the Spirit also helps when we're weak. We do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercessions for us or to us or with us with groanings which cannot be uttered. He who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together. Say, all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Friends, when you don't know what to pray, the Holy Spirit will actually begin to pray through you. In Acts 2, when the Holy Spirit came, it says that people outside thought the disciples were drunk. Why? Because they were experiencing joy. But they were also all speaking in languages they shouldn't have known. The Bible talks about speaking in the tongues of men, of angels. It talks about an unknown tongue. It talks about a new tongue. It also talks about a heavenly tongue. And friends, I want to tell you that tongues are the initial evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Some people say that love is the evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Well, in the Old Testament, there were loving people. Uh, Moses was loving and experienced the Holy Spirit. Uh, the prophet Jeremiah was loving, weeping over the people of Israel. You know, both uh, who they believe penned Jeremiah and likely penned Lamentations potentially as well, weeping. Uh, David was loving when he was in the Spirit. So to say that the baptism of spirit, the, the evidence of it is love, is not scriptural. Yes, love is a fruit of the spirit. Joy is a fruit of the spirit. Long-suffering, peace, long-suffering, goodness, kindness, faith, gentleness, self-control. These are the fruit of the spirit. Against such there is no excess. You must live a love life, and you can only live a love life, a life filled with love, by yielding to the Holy Spirit. But you find here in Acts chapter 2, the first thing that happened when the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit is they spoke with new tongues. Why? Because out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. And when the love of God in Christ Jesus overflows you in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you are changed from the inside out. You are empowered. Your heart overflows with a good theme. And through stammering lips, as Isaiah says in Isaiah 28, verse 11, through stammering lips and a new tongue, God will actually speak to his people. Tongues are for a sign. These signs shall follow those who believe. In my name, they'll cast out demons. They'll speak with new tongues. If you believe any Christian can cast out a demon, then you have to believe that every Christian gets to speak with new tongues. Someone would say, well, Chris, you know, I, I thought not everybody speaks with new tongues. Well, if you go to church, you don't usually hear everybody standing up and giving a message in tongues. Friend, if you give a message in tongues in church, you need to interpret it or someone else needs to interpret it. That's what Paul describes in 1 Corinthians 12, also in 13, talking about love. If you have a uh, tongue of men or angels, but have not love, you're clanging cymbal and a gong. And he also spoke in 1 Corinthians 14 about tongues and interpretation of tongues. That's a teaching for another podcast. But friends, every single person gets to pray in tongues, say pray in tongues. Paul said, I pray in tongues more than everybody. He said, if a certain person speaks with a tongue uh, by themselves, they speak unto God and not unto men, and they edify themselves. See, friend, Jesus actually sent the Holy Spirit so that you'd always be edified. So you get to pray in the Spirit and if you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I want to pray for you right now. How do you know if you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? The baptism of the Holy Spirit is not a goosebump. It is not falling over under the weight of God's glory. It is not a tear. It is not some mysterious thing. It is yielding to Jesus as Lord, 
submitting to what his word says concerning the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They all spoke with other tongues. And it is yielding to that flow from within. Now, if you're going to receive that right now, I just want you to lift your hands. If you're driving, you need to pull over. Pull over at the next exit. Pause the broadcast. And I want you to say this with me. Jesus, you are Lord and not me. You died for me. You rose from the dead. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for cleansing me from my sin. I turn my back on all sin to follow you. Jesus, you promised that I'd be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Father, thank you. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. You promised you would give me fresh bread and not a stone. When I ask for the Holy Spirit, you'd give me him. Jesus, baptize me in the Holy Spirit. I will now speak with new tongues today. I reject false teachings I've learned and yield to what your word says. Thank you, Jesus, for filling me now. Just lift your hands. I'm going to begin to pray for you. Father, I thank you for the power of God falling upon every single person hearing this. I curse every lie that comes against them, every lie of unworthiness. The forgiveness of Christ cleanses you, and you can't earn a gift. That's why he causes you to be worth enough to be filled and cleansed. In Jesus' name, be baptized in the Holy Spirit right now, friend. Now begin to speak with new tongues, even by faith. You will not make it up. You will speak with new tongues by faith out of your... There it goes, right there. You're feeling that bubbling up. You're experiencing that power, that presence. Hallelujah. Ale brastansi blestesi, blastusis blastasis, blessend brastansis prefintes brastansis. Receive, 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 my child. You are the beloved. You are the one that I care for. You are the one. Brastensis brafentosis blafes secrest ansocrostis. You're the one that I bore the cross for. You're the one that I gave everything for. You're the one that I love. Bravendisis provadosis panefetrist entristansis. You're the one that I care for. You're the one that I love. You're the one that I love. You're the one that I love. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for that baptism. Just begin to continue to speak in that new tongue even right now. Do it by faith. It starts right there, right there, friend. It just starts and you begin to yield. You know, a little uh, a little child learns how to speak and they start with few words. In the spirit, you're beginning to thank God in either the tongue of men or angels, a heavenly tongue or a new tongue. Hallelujah. Or an unknown tongue. You're beginning to pray in the spirit and you're beginning to be edified. Someone says, I don't feel anything. Friend, faith is not a feeling. Faith is hearing what God has to say about you and agreeing with it and then acting upon it. Faith without works is dead. Begin to speak by faith right now out of your mouth. This happened to me by myself uh, in my apartment when I was 19 years of age, reading the Bible for myself. It's happening to you right now. Hallelujah. We're going to continue with part three of Now That You're Saved. Join us in this next teaching.